This video will go through the lecture for the special senses for the ear. Um, the ear houses two senses, um, hearing and equilibrium or balance. The receptors for those senses, senses um, are mechanoreceptors, meaning that they respond to some type of mechanical movement, all right? in this case, vibration. All right? And there's different organs that sense different parts, um, different organs that sense the two hearing and balance. But first, let's talk about the anatomy of the ear. Okay, there's basically three parts to the ear. We have the external part, the external ear, which ends at the tympanic membrane. All right, so we have the external outer ear that includes the auricle, the pinna. And we have the middle ear, which is in this area here, the middle eight, the middle ear, that includes the ossicles, the hammer, anvil, and uh, the stirrup or the stapes, malleus incus the stapes. Um, and then you have the inner ear uh, in here, the inner ear which includes the semicircular canals, uh, the cochlea, the vestibule, uh, which are important for the senses of hearing and balance and equilibrium. Okay, so the external ear um, includes, let's remove all this stuff. Okay, so your external ear includes the auricle, right? And its purpose of the external ear is only to relay sound into uh, the, the tube, the external acoustic meatus or the auditory canal. All right, so we have this auditory canal okay um, it ends at the tympanic membrane or the eardrum um, which you see right here okay. the middle ear also known as the tympanic cavity is air-filled cavity with uh, within the temporal bone it houses the ossicles, this is only involved in the sense of hearing, right? So the outer ear relays message or relays sound, and the uh, inner, the middle ear relays the, the sound waves to the inner ear where the, the sensation is involved. Okay, then you have, um, there's two tubes within the inner ear. <laughs> The opening for the auditory canal, what you see here, okay, what you see here, and then you see this tube right here in blue, okay, in blue. That is the eustachian tube or pharyngeal tympanic tube. Eustachian tube also has another name for it, okay, eustachian, eustachian tube, okay, uh, so. Those are allow for equalizing pressure across on either side of the tympanic membrane. So on either side of, of the membrane on one side or the other, right? So you open, this is where you kind of chew gum, you open your ears and you equalize pressure. This is why you have, when you have a cold and you're on the plane, you're congested, that feels like the, the pressure is unequal on one side or the other because this ends up being, sometimes can be filled with fluid um, that's when you have otitis media, like ear infection. This is filled with fluid. Uh, and it, this um, opens and drains into the pharynx. That's pharyngeal, for, it refers to pharynx. All right, so fluid goes down there and then is um, swallowed. So you have the three bones, the ossicles, the, the hammer, the malleus, the anvil, the incus, and the stirrup, the stapes. Those are your auditory os ossicles. And their function is to relay vibrations of the tympanic membrane, eventually into um, the co into the round window, into the uh, vestibule and the cochlea. Uh, that is for the sensation of hearing. Okay, so your semicircular canals, cochlea, and the vestibule. Okay, it actually goes into the oval window. That's what this is. This is the oval window of the inner ear. All right, so the inner ear now includes those um, sense organs, right? The cochlea, 
the vestibule and the semicircular canal. So you have your cochlear vestibule and your semicircular canals. Those are the sense organs for hearing and balance. Inside of those sense organs are actually filled with fluid, what we call endolymph. Okay, endolymph. And all of this is actually, all of these, the notes that are associated with this are also posted on Blackboard. Um, so you have, uh, there's also perilymph that um, is inside, kind of suspends all of this together. Okay. So let's move on to the next. Okay, so one thing that's happening is, you know, sound comes in changes or alters moves the tympanic membrane around okay moves the tympanic membrane that then is conducted from here sound waves come in and move the eardrum that is conducted through the the hammer the anvil and the states to the oval window and that then sh causes vibrations of the endolymph inside the cochlear and then along this path right different hair cells are uh, stimulated depending upon the pitch of, of of sound high pitch or low pitch okay and then that specific hair cells then uh, stimulate the nerve in different ways which then causes um, the sense of the sensation of hearing okay so this is what the inner ear looks like you have your semicircular canals the vestibule and the cochlea, this is the cochlea, and you can see this, the vestibular nerve come out and actually forms these little things right here. You see this kind of like little triangle right here. Oh, I was doing green. This little triangle right there, right there, and right there. Okay, that is what we call the cupule. Okay, so these are the organs. Let's just go through the organs of equilibrium and how it happens, right? So we have this equilibrium that occurs. Okay. So here we're looking at the membranes in the vestibule, looking at the little part, and you can see you have these, these cells that are supporting hairs, right, little, little cilia, ciliated hairs, and they're surrounded by this fluid, right, what, what's called an otolithic membrane that hold them in place. All right, and then you have your hair cell and a supporting cell, and then you have these nerve fibers that are associated. That's going to relay the message to the vestibular division of the cranial nerve, um, which is important for balance. Okay, so we have two types of equilibrium. We have static equilibrium, and we have dynamic equilibrium. Okay, for static equilibrium, it tells you kind of where things are. All right, so when your head moves, all right, so this is static equilibrium. It gives you the idea of... Um, where your head is in space okay so when your head's upright you have those hair cells they're up and they're in this otolithic membrane and they are not bent but when you bend your head forward gravity pulls the fluid of the membrane and actually bends these hairs it bends these hairs which sends a which is the stimulus to send an impulse down the cranial nerve and then you get the sensation of what you know your dynamic equilibrium has has changed, All right? So those movements cause the otoliths. These are these things up here. These otoliths. There's like stone-like um, collections that will move in response to gravity. Right, and it bends the hair cells, and it tells you where your head is in space. Now, the other equilibrium we talk about, and especially you may be more um, a, um, familiar with, is back here, these cupulas right there, right back here. Right, this, so this is your, right, this is the ampulla, this whole thing. Right, this little um, the bulge at the end there that's a whole ampulla and then you have this little um, 
little triangular thing at the uh, the, at the the Christa Ampullaris. Uh, angular movements. I don't know why this didn't, this uh, kind of messed up. So this is supposed to be in, move this H over here. No, that's fine. All right, so this is the cupula of the crystal of the ampullaris, right? And you see that cupula that we talked about, that's the same thing. That's one we're talking about right there. And this is going to end up bending one way or the other. This is for angular movements, all right, angular Right, meaning that you kind of spin around. Right, if you're spinning around, what ends up happening is that the fluid within this, they get by centrifugal force moves moves out and ends up bending this cupula and causes different type of sense. Well, for you guys in there. Okay, so if the head moves, the cupula drags. Right. All right, so here's your angular movement. The endolymph flows through this and bends this hair, these hair cells, okay? That sensations into nerve fibers and gives you an idea of what um, is happening, where the direction of body movement is going, okay? And this is dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic right it means that it can change right and this is within the crista ampullaris right the ampulla of each semicircular canal so your head moves the cupula drags and it ends up the flow of endolymph moves this and then it gives you an idea of what's happening and that impulse is sent via the vestibular nerve to the cerebellum right which covers and and is important for balance and gives you input uh, based upon what's happening to your head, right? So now, as you get older, this endolymph thickens and it moves differently, um, and you end up. And that's why a lot of older people uh, don't like roller coasters because it gives them a headache. Um, and this from this input, right? So that's your equilibrium that's present. So let's talk about the others of this, okay? Um, this kind of really messed up a little bit, but. Um, to give you an idea of what this looks like, right? There's a space inside the temporal bone, okay? And your vibrations, this is going to be the afferent fibers of the cochlear nerve, okay? So here's afferent fibers of the cochlear nerve. That's this cochlear nerve right here, okay? And this is going to be important for uh, the sense of hearing, okay? So hearing. So this is filled with perilymph, right, and different vestibular portions so you have your vestibular membrane um, this is so you have the vestibular membrane and this filled with fluid and there's fluid in the spiral organ of corti right and then this is the cochlear duct which also includes endolymph which is inside there so there's fluid in each of these endolymph and perilymph and you can see here there's actually some cells all right at the end of this okay which attached which then attach to the cochlear nerve Okay, so what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have vibrations sent and transferred from um, the transferred from the tympanic membrane through the ossicles into the oval window of the co of the semicircular canals of, of of the inner ear, and that's going to cause these hairs to move which then is um, associated as sound or here. Okay, so this is what these hairs look like. So here's the hair receptors, right? So we see these hairs and you have this uh, tectorial membrane that's on top of it. So tectorial, tector, uh, tectonic plates touch, okay? So and then you have the vestibular membrane and your fibers, supporting cells, and basilar membrane. Okay, so high-pitched sounds disturb the short, stiff fibers of the membrane, of the basilar membrane. Okay, and then receptors, uh, receptor cells close to the close to the oval window are stimulated. So these cells that are close to the membrane are stimulated, and then uh, low-pitched sounds disturb the, the the 
floppy parts. So these kind of hairs are moved and that causes impulses. All right. So then all these specific cells are, um, let's go back, located. So depending upon what's happening, right, so we have, okay, so here's your external ear, okay, so you get one vibration and amplitude, we try to amplify the sound, gets to the eardrum, and then it's, amplifi it's amplified in the middle ear f through the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup to the oval window, then your fluids in the upper and middle cochlear canals, right? They move that, they relay or conduct that sensation to the hair cells. Those organs of cordi are stimulated and that, that then stimulates the nerve for um, the sensation of, of hearing sounds, associated with sound. Okay, so here's where the fibers of the basal or membrane are, right, where those hair cells are so here's your round window right so we have the stapes right here it's causing vibration in this area right and it's stimulating hairs along the pathway so then the different um, notes whether it be frequency low notes or you know low notes to high notes they stimulate different hairs along this path and then you get the variation or the, the, dynam the dynamic range of sound that can be heard. Now, if you have uh, prolonged exposure to loud noises, what ends up happening is those hair cells break and no, no longer, if they break off, so you have a, a, you know, a hair cell, you have a cell with the hairs come off and if they're broken, Right, if they're if they're broken, they're removed. Now there's no more input, you know, to the to the nerve. Right, there's no more sensation because that that hair is gone. Okay, so what you end up with is a type of deafness. Now deafness is any de degree of hearing loss, and it could be um, based upon two different things. It could be conduction deafness, meaning that uh, there's no transmission of sound from the outer ear to the inner ear. Something wrong with the middle, something's wrong with the external or middle ears. There's something not happening. Or you could have sensor, sens, sensorial, sensory neural deafness, which results from a damage to the nervous system. And that's where you can have what's now called cochlear implants. Cochlear implants will, prov will uh, process sound we transfer that sound that you hear um, into an electrical stimulus, which then feeds into the cochlea and then, then stimulates the nerve as a small electrical impulses, which then is deciphered as sound. So that covers the ear um, and hearing and balance. The notes for this lecture are also posted on Blackboard. Uh, go through the slides and the notes together, and you should be good. All right, any questions, feel free to email me.